Okay, our title today is Entropy and Free Energy. I'm going to use the overhead even though I'm sure that um, I'm going to hear a lot of complaints about that tomorrow, but here we go. Okay, it's too much to write. I don't want to write it. Um, my arm hurts and you guys know why. Alright, so Entropy and Free Energy. Um, so today what we're going to do is we are going to talk about thermodynamics. So we are done with equilibrium um, and we're going to spend a couple of days talking about thermodynamics. Now there's people that spend their entire careers talking about thermodynamics um, and so of course this is an introduction to thermodynamics. And really the question that we're going to get at here is why do reactions have the value of K that they do? Why is it that some reactions go all the way to completion, that their, their K value is huge, um, and others have very small values for K, their equilibriums lie far left, um, and um, we can't ever really make a whole lot of product without manipulating the situation. All right, so entropy and free energy, well, free energy, we, all of it will answer the question. All right, so entropy is a measure of randomness or disorder. Okay, we abbreviate or the symbol for entropy is S. So if delta S is positive, meaning the change in entropy is positive, we say that things have become more disordered or they have become more random. If delta S is negative, so change in entropy is negative, entropy is decreasing in a reaction, we say that the products are more ordered or there's less disorder, whatever you want, whichever way you want to look at it. <clears throat> now, things will go to disorderness unless there is some kind of input and energy. Okay, the universe, the entropy of the universe is always on the increase and we have to work. We have to do work, provide energy to order things. Think about your backpack for your binder and you'll know what I mean. Okay, um, so how do we recognize entropy changes in um, chemical processes? So how do we know if something's more ordered or less ordered? Um, how do we know when products are more ordered or less ordered compared to reactants? How do we know if entropy is increasing or decreasing? Um, well, liquids have greater entropy than solids. So liquids are more disordered than solids. Right? Because the particles of a liquid are able to, to move around. They're not in some kind of structured organization. <clears throat> but they're clinging to each other. So therefore, gases have greater entropy than liquids do. Because they're not even clinging to each other. Uh, so gases are more disordered than liquids. And liquids are more disordered than solids. So the more the disorder, the greater the entropy. Particles in solution. So particles in an aqueous solution or any kind of solution have greater entropy than the solids themselves. So dissolving we also we always get a positive delta S with dissolving because now the particles that made up the solid are 
randomly arranged throughout their solvent. Um, the greater the value of the number of moles, the change in the number of moles of gas, the greater the entropy. So if the products have more moles of gas than the reactants, we say that the products have more entropy, that we have positive delta x. Now, these kinds of questions are going to be real easy for you. We'll do a problem set about this, and they're, they're very straightforward. It's not, it's not a big deal at all. Um, all right. So, oh yeah, here, I have an example here. You, I hope you can see it. Um, so we've got one mole of gas going to one, two moles of gas. And so this reaction right here has got a positive value for delta S, more disordered in the products. Okay, increase in temperature increases entropy, right, because things are vibrating or in, in, in um, the, in terms of the gas, moving around uh, with greater kinetic energy, more, more random, more motion, more random, more disorder. All right. So there's two things that drive chemical reactions. Two things that are influencing whether or not in given environmental conditions reactants will become products. Delta H, enthalpy. So this says a negative delta H, which is an exothermic reaction. That is going to favor a reaction to be spontaneous. And when we, I think I have it written down here. When we say that it is spontaneous, we don't mean like, oh, I'm spontaneous. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this thing right this second because I'm spontaneous. Okay, that's, what we, that's the way we use the word spontaneous in our vocabulary, but that's not the way chemists view spontaneity. Spontaneity it has nothing to do with time when we're talking about chemistry. Spontaneity just means can the thing go from reactant to product without any outside intervention? No catalysts, no changes in temperature. Disorder. Okay, so disorder also favors spontaneity. Disorder also all also favors favors. Doesn't necessarily mean for sure that we're gonna have a big value for K. That this thing will move forward, react into product. So a negative delta H is very hope, hopeful in that you've got a large value of K. And a positive delta S. Okay, now, here we go. Spontaneity does not refer to time only to whether there is any outside influence necessary to move the reaction forward. Uh, 
Okay. Now, enthalpy and entropy are related to each other. Um, or their relationship, I should say, their relationship is illustrated in this equation. Delta G naught, and that means standard state, not STP, not standard temperature pressure, because notice, uh, the pressure is one atmosphere, but the temperature is definitely not zero degrees Celsius. It is room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. And we're saying that we've got one molar of anything. We're talking about one, one molar stuff. Okay, so delta G is equal to delta H minus T times delta S. Change in enthalpy, change in entropy, temperature, delta G. What the heck's delta G? That is Gibbs free energy. Delta G is free energy. Plugging into this equation is sometimes tricky because the units for delta G, delta H, and delta S are often given differently. Delta H is generally given in kilojoules per mole. Uh, delta G kilojoules per mole, and entropy is joules per mole Kelvin. So, a uh, mistake that is often made in doing these calculations is that the units don't match. So you've got to be certain that everything is either in joules or everything is in kilojoules. So we're to just move everything into joules to match the units for delta S. Okay, now, what the heck is this G gives free energy? Well, it is a measure of the maximum possible useful work obtainable from a process. Okay, how much energy is available to do work. That is what Gibbs free energy tells us. How much work can we get out of a particular reaction? Process, but reaction is what we're talking about. Okay. Now, this is enough to just bend the old brain here. It really is. Um, if we calculate delta G and it's less than zero, that is an indicator that our K value is going to be greater than one. So, when delta G is negative, products will be favored over reactants. Uh, when delta G is positive, that means the K value will be less than 1. Reactants are favored products at equilibrium. When delta G is equal to zero, 
k is 1. The thing is at equilibrium. So equilibrium occurs at the lowest value of free energy, the most negative delta G available to the reaction system. Okay, just think about that. All right. <clears throat> it also predicts spontaneity. Whether something will be spontaneous or not. So, um, Delta G is negative, the reaction is spontaneous, K is greater than 1. Delta G is positive, K is less than 1. <coughs> the reaction is not spontaneous, it's going to need some kind of outside influence to move forward. And if delta G is zero, the reaction is at equilibrium. And the last thing we're going to write is the more negative the value of delta G, the further a reaction will have to go to the right before it can reach equilibrium. Equilibrium occurs at the lowest value of free energy, the most negative delta G available to the reaction system. Okay, so we'll do problems so that you can see the kinds of things that you're going to be held responsible for knowing. But this is just one of these kinds of things where just keep thinking about it. Keep thinking about it and allow the different sorts of nuances that emerge from this statement. Just let them unfold in terms of your understanding of why some chemical reactions go forward and others do not. <clears throat>